Hey guys, this is Johnny Glock. Um, I want to use this little schematic here to go over um, some characteristics of trigger pull. I had a client that um, sent me this. It's 34. Pretty snazzy, huh? To do some trigger work on it, it has a uh, Suarez Overwatch shoe in it. Um, it has these little lines on here that are going to match up with the lines on here. So when I explain this, it's going to make sense. Um, <clears throat> so typically with trigger pull, you have this thing called pre or free travel. Um, and that is the amount of time that it takes to either basically to engage the wall, which is the connector. That is what is called your wall. And see wall and then from here <clears throat> with the striker fire gun you either have a long break or a short break that would probably go about right to here but that's called break travel um, this line here represents the breaking point itself so um, some people that like those Evo ghost connectors they basically are set so the pre-travel melts into the brake travel and you have like one long pull and then you hit the brake point. There is no wall to say. A lot of people that kind of shoot steel tend to go that route too. They don't want any upset of the sights. They don't want any clicks. They just want it to be smooth brake, smooth brake. Um, so after the brake point, <clears throat> in a good trigger you're just going to have a dead stop. Um, but with the Glock, the way it's designed, you have over travel. And then you actually hit the back of the frame, or inside the bar actually hits the right angle of the trigger bar, hits the frame as well, and then you have a dead stop. So after the break, when you have this over travel jump, they call it, it's kind of causes the sights to cant up in the air um, and messes with uh, sight picture and whatnot. If, if you know, you're not practicing a lot or you don't understand that that's in there. So basically, <clears throat> with um, this, we're going to go through those characteristics and show you actually. So this is <clears throat> the starting point. I have that lined up with the tip of the trigger just so we have something to, uh, you know, gauge it with. And then from here to here, is pre-travel so that's your that's your take up what a lot of people call take up actually I'm gonna pull this from behind um, what people call take up so right to there and you can see it's lining up Whoop, see this doesn't have much of a wall <laughs> so so right to there is you're on the wall then I'm gonna stall the trigger well I can't stall it here but all this right here see it moving moving is break and then over travel but What's happening here is the at the trigger, the break point is actually at, get this in under the light, right? The break point is actually at this line, okay? And then this gun has a lot of over travel. So you have pre-travel, here's your wall. All this length is what it takes to break. So this is one of those kind of celery breaky triggers, you know what I mean? It feels like a carrot breaking lots of sponge to it. And um, that's not the shoe's fault, okay? That's the rest of the way the, the trigger is built, and we'll get into that when we open up the gun. So basically, um, it's hard, to, it's hard to, sh to do it without blurring these lines, but if I pull up here to, to my pre-travel, soak up my pre-travel, and I slowly pull, and you see the break happens, and then we have this over-travel. And now, with this trigger, I forgot to go over the reset right there. So now if you watch coming forward with our lines as well, you have to come all the way, there it's resetting. It's almost all the way back up to the pre-travel. So you have from pre-travel right there, so you have um, what I've calculated with this gun, break, really long reset for a competition trigger. And that's basically what he's doing with this. Um, he's competing. 
Awesome looking gun though, huh? I was impressed. I mean, I, I think uh, Suarez is doing a great job. I know the frame was done by Zevtech, and I think they did a great job of shaping it and uh, putting the carbon, what is the silicone carbide on here, and you know, very aggressive, but man, it doesn't move out of your hands. So, uh, let's get the trigger to match the gun. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna pop this open. Um, right away, you can see there is a coated, TIN coated um, safety plunger, which usually is ZevTech. And then when I look here at the striker, I can see it's definitely um, ZevTech piece just because the way they do the tails on their strikers, it's pretty uh, obvious. And this is probably going to be a skeletonized lightened striker. I can kind of tell by the markings. Uh, we'll open it up real quick just to verify that. So, there you go. We have a um, extended lightened striker, skeletonized like I thought would be in there. I'm taking the spring off so you all can see this. And then when, I, when I'm a, kind of take a gun in and look at a striker, the first thing I'm feeling is like right here on the striker lug face, which is this part. Um, I'm feeling for burrs or anything like that. And right here on the end, edge of it, I can feel just a lot of uh, and that's going to cause a problem with the brake. It's grabbing. I could feel that when I was pulling the trigger as well. And also over here, let's see if you can actually see that if I can get you to get this to focus right on these shelves. You have a, and I always talk about this in other videos, there's a good shot of it. That middle, in the middle of that shelf right there, you have a smashed part of the um, striker because what is happening is it is because it's lightning and it's moving faster it is um, you know when it's depressed right here it's kind of smashing against the shelves of the safety plunger so this has to be cleaned up as well um, and I do that on Cratex wheels so, you know, right away I'm going to replace this because it's actually wearing as well. You'll get that, that wear and then that finish kind of gets into everything and can cause some friction problems. And then with this striker, um, I'll restone, the, I'll reface it right here and I'll take care of uh, the shelves as well. And move this stuff over here. And then I'm going to pop the trigger assembly out. And so this is a <clears throat> Zevtech. V4 race connector and that is kind of what contributed to the long to the longer brake travel because you have this graduated geometry here of a 3.5 connector it takes a longer time for this radius to run down that angle before it actually drops the striker um, and I, I did I did open this gun already to take a look at uh, some things um, one of the interesting things is this is uh, MP3 coated, which I think is interesting because if, if you look right away, because everyone talks about the merits of MP3 coating, but you can see that that coating easily was worn away right here by the polymer on the inside of the gun, which is this piece that's right over here. Actually, no, it's harder to see. It's harder to see with this camera. But there's a polymer outcropping over polymer outcropping over here that you can kind of see it now. That is rubbing against 
this right there. And also you can see where on the, uh, let's see right, along the bar right here too you can see where. And then up on top you can see where on the top of the shelves. So, you know, the MP3 coating on these bars, you know, and what they usually charge for them, it just, uh, it doesn't cut the mustard. I don't know where the bar's from or anything, but, you know, to me it's just not one of those coatings that's necessary. Be a lot better to polish it, because um, that's kind of what it's doing right here. It's self-polishing. I, I had to take the uh, trigger shoe apart because I needed to get the safety out of here because I have to modify the safety to um, be able to get this trigger to behave the way that I discussed with um, with my clients. So, you know, basically he he wants a little pre-travel, he wants a quick break, no over travel, and a short reset, short palpable tactile reset. Um, this is a this is a gun right here that um and I'll show you there's no drop the magazine. Open it up, it's cleared. But so if I would make the marks on this trigger, now this is just one of my um combat triggers. So it's not even like really 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 dialed in for competition. But that's the starting point right there. Now this you would think it would have like okay, so there's your starting point. You can see right where that is. And now with this trigger, and I'll get my hand underneath here. There is no pre-travel. So there's no free travel. You're right on the. You're right, basically on the wall. So when I does go to break, I'm only pulling there, and it breaks. And let me mark that. And so, then from there, there's no over travel. And so, when I come forward, back into reset that's all you're resetting right there and those so with this type of travel there's only two lines there's because there's no over travel and there's no pre travel it's just uh, a little bit of break travel but you can see from the way this one's working that it's basically just a back and forth even when I let my finger off there's just a nudge right there of hitting the connector and like I said this isn't really even a uh, I'm gonna lay it on here this isn't really like a, a completely this isn't a combat. I mean, this isn't a competition trigger. It's a combat trigger. So, but you can still see it has these quickness to it. It has no over travel. Stops dead right after the break. Comes forward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, start working on this trigger. We have our lines still on here on this frame. It's just uh, with a pencil. And so basically. <clears throat> what you're looking at right now is, I have it written down here. So it's 3 sixteenths to the wall in actual, in actuality. So the first line is 3 sixteenths and the second line from 3 sixteenths to a quarter, from 3 sixteenths it takes a quarter for it to break. So that's 3 eighths travel from the starting point to the break point. So you have three eighths of movement. And then you have an eighth of an inch of over travel, which is this last little bit right there. And then your reset, if you remember, came all the way forward, so it was three eighths back to reset here. So you're seeing there's a lot of movement in this trigger back and forth and back and forth. And for competition, that's not uh, the best setup. You want as, mo as minimal movement as you can. Uh, some people like no take up, some people just because of muscle memory want a nudge of take up or even a full amount of take up because they're just so used to shooting blocks and that's kind of incorporated into their muscle memory. So um, I'm going to do some work on this gun. I'm going to change out this bar. I have to uh, soften some things and take care of some things with the trigger safety. I'm going to rebuild this housing. I'm going to use a different connector other than the V4 connector um, to change the, the the brake travel, want to get this thing breaking quickly and uh, resetting as quickly as possible. So I'm going to uh, stop the video now and part two will be coming and we'll see what happens when we put this gun back together and how it compares against these lines right here. Okay.